I think I was six or seven. And that's when my dad told me that I was black and that he was black and so were my brothers. I was disappointed. I didn't want to be black because black people are portrayed negatively in the media. And even though I was six at the time, I knew that wasn't something that I wanted to be. I want to get other people's experiences with their blackness because I feel like even though I feel unsure in it, there are probably people who don't look like me and who look more stereotypically black who probably feel the same way I have. I talked to my friend Noelle, a fellow student here at NYU Accra, and found that even if she looks more like a black person than I do, our experiences of blackness or feeling like we don't belong in that category are similar. Said I was raised in predominantly white spaces, um, specifically in central Pennsylvania. Uh, I went to private school for a long time. I went to predominantly white institutions, ballet classes, you know, sports practices. Mm -hmm. And so I think being in those environments and spaces, although I was physically black, my family was culturally black, in my own person, I started to detach myself from those things because I feared the stereotypes that came with them. Mm -hmm. As you get older, it started manifesting in ways of me straightening my hair, you know, kind of waking up every morning praying and wishing I would be a blonde girl with blue eyes. And yeah. that was my earliest memory as a three-year-old in preschool, wanting those yeah. features. And me too. in retrospect, it, it's it's appalling yeah. that such a small child could already be so uncomfortable in skin. And coming to Ghana, it actually really hurt me that people started to assume that I was white because of how pale I am. I didn't want to be associated with a group of people who have done so much to the rest of the world in the name of white supremacy and racial superiority. experience like Elvina and really thinking about your connection to your ancestors in a new way. That's what I think I expected to happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of that whole packaged idea, or maybe not packaged, but that expectation for people in the diaspora that there's almost going to be that coming home moment. Mm -hmm. And I think I felt a spark of that when we were standing in the room at Elmina. But when I saw that door of no return for me, mm -hmm. it was gone. And I really realized that when my ancestors passed through that door, perhaps not at Amina, perhaps right. in a different place, but the whole idea of passing through that door for a return, having your frame, your actual physical frame due to starvation and abuse and all of these awful, awful things that have happened to you, you've already embodied so much, so you've shrink through that door. You're a shell of a person. You've been stripped of your name on the land that you were born and you carry the stories of generations in that place. And whatever is meant to be carried in that small vessel that you now are across the ocean, if you even survive, for me, that's what I was thinking. And so I really, I was reflecting on <clears throat> the phenomenon that you pointed out. And I think for me, I feel more connected to my ancestors and think about them when I'm in the United States. When I'm at my family home, when I'm visiting South Carolina, when I'm going to spaces that I know my more immediate ancestors who are the product of slavery have been. Because I think, and this it was kind of devastating when this happened a few months ago, I kind of put it together. I'm looking at the people around me, and to me, they feel like foreigners. I feel like a foreigner in this place. I don't know the language. I, perhaps I could have pushed myself to learn some more tree, but you know, I was in all the Ghanaian spaces I've, I've traveled in since being here, they always make a joke, oh, you're such an Omrimi, oh, you're so white, and oh, you're so American. So any attempts at trying to connect and sort of flow and perform in those Ghanaian spaces is interrupted because it's very starkly obvious that I'm not Ghanaian, that I'm not West African. And it's been pointed out to me, so I think I quietly admitted that to myself. This is Ni, his wife Philomena, and their daughter Nicole. They're proud Ghanaians. I think besides being born to African parents, um, you, you live in communities that 
um, actually show you that you are not only Ga, mm -hmm. but you, you, you are African. Um, the culture, mm. um, certain music, certain food that you eat gives you a whole lot of idea about um, your ancestral um, um, following that where you're from, mm. stuff like that. So it, it's it's not like it's a choice or you learned it from TV no, but, or anything. But then growing up, school and everything plays a big role in right. shaping who you are. Mm -hmm. as a whether I'm in Ghana or mm -hmm. whether I'm in the United States, mm -hmm. my blackness has always been a question. for debate question. question. Um, and you know, the reason that I look like this is a part of the story of the diaspora. Okay. So it's it doesn't make me any less black that I look this way. It's just a different part of the story of. Of black people yeah. and so um, my experience is that because of that depending on where I go I've always felt like can I really claim ownership of my blackness and, mm. and my family mm. there are times when you get that, that. was just an example like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> times when, I, I when when you, you you get stuff like that like sometimes even um, the, the, the clothes you wear mm -hmm. um, you wear certain clothes to certain places and they they ask if you're really African um, you're an African. Why are you not in your kente? Why are you not in your African wear? Why are you why are you putting on suit? And why don't you have beads on? Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. But it, it's just like you said. It's always been steadfast that you know who you are. You know you're Ghanaian. You know you're African, and um, you don't let certain things actually sway you from that thoughts that. You are African. Did your experience of blackness or perception of yourself change when you've been in the United States? Because the racial climate there is just a whole completely different mm. from here or anywhere else in the world, obviously. Funny enough, I, I didn't really see um, any form of like racial indifference, maybe because um, we went there on a separate mission or a different mission, so probably we didn't get to see things like that. But, but most of the people I came in contact with were really friendly, but it never for once made me think um, any different of where I'm coming from. I still wore my, my, my African prints with, with pride. Um, I, I spoke the same way I speak mm -hmm. even while I'm in, I was in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So it never for once affected me. Um, no. Ghanaians are lucky. They're surrounded by their own heritage daily. Black people are in the majority here. Ni and Mina don't have the same relationship to blackness that I or other Americans do. In America, there's blackness and then there's whiteness. But in Ghana, that dichotomy doesn't exist. And the whole question of home and identity and who am I really and this whole idea of blackness or pan-African, pan-blackness, you know, that I had sort of had in my imaginary and was sort of pulled apart at the seams. And I had to decide, I was like, okay, am I still gonna try to force this narrative to be true, right. you know, and try to throw myself into being as Ghanaian as possible? Yeah. Or am I just gonna be content to be where I am? Because I am a product of my mom, my my great-grandmother, the culture that was formed in the South of being a Black American in the South, and a lot of who I am embodies that. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's my family's story. We took our experience and we created our own family culture, our own subculture of the broader, I think, American diaspora, Black American diaspora. Blackness is not a monolith. It's not one identity where there's a checklist of things like, oh, you know how to dance or you listen to hip hop. I think it'll be more about showing that what links us all together is our ancestry and our blood and our culture rather than something that, something about what we look like or we all do the same things in the same way. I want us to recognize that when we force ourselves to adhere to these structures that have been forced upon us, we're kind of only holding ourselves back. <laughs>